Hello, and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are bringing back a classic. Municipal Monday is returning to The Valley Today, and I am picking it back off with my county administrator. I am sitting at the office of Frederick County Administrator, Mike Bolhoffer. Mike, welcome to the community. I joked with you when I got here. I know you're relatively new in this position, but I am so happy to finally get to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you also. You came in November of 2021, originally from Florida. Tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I lived in Florida for about 40 years, and I was the uh, city manager at the city of Winter Garden, which is a suburb just outside the uh, city of Orlando. And I was worked for the city for 25 years, 15 of which was the uh, city manager. So I have a, a lot of uh, municipal experience. How different is it being a city manager than an administrator? Are those roles very similar? Is it about population? Actually, I think the biggest difference is the way they do things in Virginia as opposed to the way they do them in Florida. Ah. In Virginia, a lot of it is defined by state statutes, whereas in Florida, it's not defined by state statutes. Virginia is what they call a Dillon Rule state, where the government tells you what you can do. And in Florida, it's a home rule state where the uh, state government tells you what you can't do. <laughs> See, I think I would get along well in Florida. I'm the one that always tells my husband what I don't want for dinner instead of what I do want when we're having that conversation in the evening. So you're at a home rule home. I am. You're exactly right. So what kind of duties did you have there as city manager? What types of experience did you bring here? Well, my duties there was pretty much the chief executive officer for the city, so I was really in charge of all the different departments, fire, police, IT, HR, the whole kit and caboodle. Up here in the county, with the constitutional officer working for county, that's quite a bit different. What made you think this was the type of job that you wanted? What made you think you wanted to make a change? Well, I actually wanted to make a change. I wanted to move out of Florida. I was actually tired of the heat and the traffic <laughs> jams. It's 95 degrees and 95% humidity about six months a year. And the traffic outside of Orlando was horrendous and it's only getting worse as the city grows. So I really like this area in Virginia, especially up towards the north part of Virginia, better temperature, less traffic that had hills and trees. So I really wanted to move to this area. This job became open and it looked like a great opportunity. So that's why I applied for this position and was lucky enough to get it. So tell me a little bit about what you do in the position as the Frederick County Administrator. Well, the administrator is sort of like a chief executive officer for a company, but it's a little bit more defined than it would be in the state of Florida. I oversee the fire department and IT, the internal departments. But the biggest difference here is that the treasury and the elections and the sheriffs are all constitutional officers, so they don't report to me. So it makes it a little bit more tricky in how you get things done. Yes, yeah, sometimes it could be easier, but sometimes not so much. Yes, it goes both ways. <laughs> is it different from the perspective of the types of amenities and things that you oversee here versus what you did in Florida? No, they're pretty much the same. There's not a whole lot of difference in the amenities and the way things are done. I would say the biggest difference is in the state of Virginia, as somebody from this area told me, there's a little bit more bureaucracy in the state of Virginia. Virginia has been making laws for 400 years in any state, and they like it. So there's a lot more bureaucracy here. So it takes a little bit longer and it's a little bit more difficult to accomplish things. Was it overwhelming at all when you came in and just had to look at everything? Because I'm sure there were a lot of moving parts when you got here, a lot of projects that were midway, a lot of projects that were slated to start. What was those first couple of weeks like? The first couple of weeks were overwhelming. First of all, learning a whole different way of doing things, learning all the projects, learning all the staff, learning the elected leaders. Yeah, it was overwhelming and a very daunting task. A lot of good people here who helped me out, so it made it a lot easier. And working with the Board of Supervisors, I would imagine, is something a little bit different for you as well. Yeah, it's quite a bit different how they do things here. In, in a Florida with a city manager, they tend to have a little bit more authority, and it's a little bit easier working that way. It's much more like a corporate model where you have a board of directors and then a chief executive officer. Here, that's why they call it county administrator. It's a little bit less authority. And it makes it a little bit more difficult, but there's also advantages too. And then you also have all of these collaborations and partnerships because the city of Winchester is located inside of Frederick County. I'm sure you have a great relationship with our city manager as well. We've got a fairly decent relationship, but I've also found here that there's quite a bit of division between the city and the county. They tend to both operate quite independently. It's one of those things where I think those of us that have 
been here forever, we kind of think of them as separate entities. Even though it is true that the city is located within the county, we think of them as two separate operating things. And they actually are. Virginia is the only state in the country where cities are actually not a part of the county. Really? Yeah, all the other 49 states, a city is part of the county, so it's both county and city. But in the state of Virginia, cities are independent. Wow. Now, were there projects that you were in process when you got here that you were pretty excited about? Is there something that you're working on now that you are really proud of? I think our biggest project we're working on now is, and one of the big things that our board wanted to get done, I think a lot of the residents, was to really work to improve our transportation system. As I say, I come from Florida and Orlando, the transportation down there is terrible and the traffic jams, but here, it's all relative. Everyone here thinks the traffic is terrible. It doesn't compare to Orlando, but in the same respect, you don't want it to end up that way. So I think one of the biggest things we're working on right now in, in this county is improving our entire transportation system. And the other big project is we're looking at going from a pretty much what used to be an all volunteer fire department mm -hmm. to much more paid career firefighters. And that's going to be a big change. And fire and rescue is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I told you before we started recording, I was born and raised in Clearbrook. My dad was the assistant chief at Clearbrook Vol Volunteer Fire Department for most of my childhood. So it's kind of a big deal to get paid staff in those positions. It is a very big deal. It's a big change. It's also not cheap, but building an entire fire department. We had a recent workshop, and if they wanted to go to a full overtime career on fire, using a career firefighter, so you're talking about adding 80 firefighters. So Wow. And more equipment. So it's a significant change. And it's such a large geographical area. You've got all the way from Clearbrook clean out to my end of the county now, which is Middletown. You've got a pretty broad spectrum that you've got to cover. It's a large spectrum and it's a combination of both urban and rural. And it's very difficult to cover the entire area and provide good coverage. And we're also in the process of upgrading our entire radio system to improve our communications for the county. So that's another significant project. Well, let's take a break. Can we come back? Can we jump in the weeds a little bit with some of the projects? I want to ask you about the broadband project that's currently underway and just talk about maybe some of the road projects. Will that work? That will work. We are at the Frederick County Administrator's Office chatting with the Administrator, Mike Bohoffer. We're going to come back and talk more with him in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Jennifer San Pietro, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School, and we're partnering with our local environmental nonprofit, Sustainability Matters, to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's a sustainability tip for the day. Reduce the use of outdoor lights. Besides being a waste of electricity when you are not outside, outdoor lights can be super harmful to all sorts of living creatures. Lights affect the activity of bats, moths, and other insects, disrupt bird flight paths and hunting routines, and can even change amphibian mating behavior. It might not be feasible to get rid of outdoor lights entirely, but using a motion sensor, turning off the lights when you are not outside, or even using lights angled towards the ground can help you help out your friendly neighborhood nighttime creatures. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Municipal Monday in Frederick County today. We are sitting in the office of Frederick County Administrator Mike Bolhoffer. We're talking about some of the things that go into being the Frederick County Administrator. We talked a little bit about fully funding paid staff for Frederick County Fire and Rescue. Mike, a lot of people talk about traffic, not so much in the way that you were in the first segment, because you've got a really good point when you talk about what you were coming from in Florida. We think we've got terrible traffic traffic here until we go somewhere that actually does have traffic. But it's as bad to us in our regular everyday lives because it's what we know. That's correct. And there are a few places here where if you get stuck on the wrong roads at the wrong times and if 81 gets shut down, it can pretty much shut everything down. So you have to be, as you stated, if you've been here a while, you know all the back roads and <laughs> trick roads, so you avoid all those potential pitfalls where you get stuck in traffic. And there seems to be a lot of road improvement projects that are going on across the county right now. 
There are quite a few going on, and our goal is to have more than going on. This past budget, the board approved a lot of money, almost $20 million in future projects, and also some seed money to obtain some of the grants from the state so we can have more road projects going on. One, to catch up to where we need to be, and two, to make sure we have a sufficient capacity in the future for all our roads. So tell me about a couple of them. I'll tell you about a smaller one. This one is more of a safety issue, and that's out on 522 by Gainsborough Elementary School. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult and dangerous for cars turning left into the school and pulling out. So the goal is we're working on putting together a plan to see if we can get a traffic light warranted there to put a traffic light so parents can, and the buses can get into and out of the school safely. So that's a big project. It's been talked about for quite a few years. So we're moving forward on that. Money was uh, budgeted to pay for the study to get the traffic light warranted, which would be the first step in getting that fixed. One of the biggest projects we're also working on is looking at the eastern connector of 37. If you get into Frederick County, when you look at the north-south roads so of going east of 81, there's a real lack of roads. So one of our top priorities is finding ways to get 37 built whether it be not trying to go with the full four-lane highway at first, but do it in sections and making it so it's much more affordable because that's a critical need transportation mm -hmm. right, for uh, Frederick County. And connecting, because you can come, 37 ends there at Tasker, which is in the county, obviously, in Stephen City. That would be ideal to continue that out that way. Yeah, it'll come all the way across, connecting to both ends of 37 on the west side. See, that would be fantastic. I do drive 37. Yes, 37 <laughs> on the west side is a great road, Right. but if you try to build it as a four-lane highway on, on the east side of 81 to build that road would cost uh, about $800 million. So we're looking at different alternatives, different funding sources to get that started. They've been talking about that road for 30 or 40 years, and our goal now is to get move forward with it. Well, you've got my vote. I guess the other big one, it's a big one everyone talks about everywhere, wherever I go across the, uh, this portion of the state is what can we do about 81? Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot's been done in many years. So we've been meeting, we were talking about finding ways to get it widened to three lanes on each side or a six lane road going through the county area and also to work on improving a lot of the interchanges. Some of the interchanges here are pretty bad. So widening 81 and fixing the interchanges is a very important road fixes for us. They've done a really good job with a lot of these exits and extending the on-ramps and the off-ramps. That seems to help a lot getting in and out of 81 proper. Absolutely. We're working on some more of those interchanges also. That's one of the most important things you can do, but you still are faced with it. Once you get on 81, you're that four-lane highway with a lot of semis on it. So I think most people do their best to avoid it when they can. I joked with you before we started recording again, I could not tell you the last time. I haven't driven on 81 in quite a few years. The husband likes to take it because it's the quickest way to get from point A to point B. So I've been in the car and it is crazy how much traffic has increased on 81 just in the couple of years that I have kind of said, no, I'm not going that way. Yeah, it's the quickest way to get to, uh, from point A to point B if there's not an accident. That's true. And then it quickly becomes the <laughs> slowest way. And you mentioned the traffic light project at Gainsboro. I don't think a lot of us as regular residents really realize what has to go into putting up a traffic light somewhere. We all drive by and think, they need a light here. And we think it's as simple as saying we need a light and then you just install a light. There's a lot of things that go into that. Yeah, first of all, you have to budget the money, do the study. <laughs> to justify that a light is warranted at the intersection, then you've got to work with VDOT to have the traffic light installed. So there is a lot of work, takes a lot of time, but we're pushing forward with that project because it's so important for safety reasons. I learned recently the light that was at Lake Frederick on my end of the county on 522, that light was installed as part of that actual development that went in there at Lake Frederick and was up for the longest time and didn't work. It was there, but the lights were never on. There's even a process for when those lights get turned on and are active. It's got to be mind boggling the information that you have to have in your head at all times. It is. It's mind boggling and it's a little trickier here in the state of Virginia because VDOT controls most of the roads. For instance, in, in the state of Florida, which I'm familiar with, most localities and counties and cities control the roads. So although you have to pay for it, you do have greater control. So you've got to have a really good working relationship with VDOT and all of the different project managers that they have for different things. You absolutely have to have a good working relationship with VDOT because they control most of the road system for the entire state. And they also manage, to a certain degree, snow removal, things like that for some of our subdivisions, some of the other things here in the county as well. They pretty much manage snow removal from almost all roads in uh, Frederick County. So really? They do have to have a good relationship. They fix the potholes and the sidewalks, etc. 
So tell me about the broadband project. I mentioned to you that I had seen a press release recently. That is a really big deal because we have so many rural pockets here in the county and having access to internet at all, much less broadband internet, is really a big deal. It is a big deal. It's something they've been trying to push nationwide for all the rural areas and we're fortunate enough that we had COVID funds that we were going to use to pay for this. We were working with a lot of the other localities and they just signed the contract and now we're getting ready to move forward, create the plan and it's supposedly, and we believe so, it's going to be a three-year project to get broadband to all the rural areas or most of the rural areas. And there are a lot of them. You mentioned Gainesboro. That when you're getting out on that end of the county, you're getting into some pretty rural areas there out there. Are quite a few rural areas <laughs> that don't have internet. When I moved here, one of the things I did because I knew that ahead of time is wherever I looked at a house, I took my phone to make sure if I didn't have broadband <laughs> that I at least had my Verizon out there so I could at least be connected because internet's no longer a luxury. We've reached a point in our society where it's almost a necessity. And it's one of those things where when we think rural, we think most of the time places like Gainesboro, we think about Shawnee Land, we think about places that are kind of more remote, but it's not even that accessible sometimes in some of our smaller places like Stephen City and Middletown, there are pockets where you just can't get access to internet at all. Absolutely, it's like way back when, for some of us we remember when you couldn't get cable TV, you'd have those little pockets and you didn't have cable for the longest time and you were stuck with a dish. It'll be great for the county. Oh, more than 90% of it will be covered now. Fantastic. And that comes from COVID funds. Yeah, well, we're paying for our share, yes, with COVID funds. The majority of it is. What goes into a project like that? Is that where they're laying lines? Are they doing it above ground? I mean, what kind of stuff has to go into bringing broadband? Well, actually, this was a partnership with all the electric cooperatives, so they're running it on their poles. So there'll be some underground, some on poles and such, but that's what's going to make this feasible is working with the electric companies because they have a lot of the infrastructure in place. And you've got two here that cover Frederick County. I think Rappahannock Electric Cooperative and Shenandoah Valley Electric Cooperative cover most of the electrical needs for Frederick County. Correct. So how have you enjoyed being here? I joked with you, you came in November, got to celebrate your first Christmas here and snow, but you were not, you told me you weren't a stranger to snow. No, I've been around, I've lived around the different places in the world in America. So was, the snow was actually, I enjoyed the snow. It was great. Like I said, I love this area. I love the hills, the trees, and the climate's fantastic this summer. After uh, several years in Florida, this summer seems almost cool. I've heard people <laughs> complain about the heat, and I'm going, you need to go spend a year in the Florida in the summer, and you'll never complain about the heat again. See, and it's funny. My ex-husband was from upstate New York, and I used to complain about the snow, and his answer was always, you haven't seen snow, so stop complaining about what the snow is like. Yeah, that's one of the reasons my wife and I chose this part of Virginia, because it was in between. It wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold, but sort of like the old oldie locks. It was just right <laughs> weather-wise. We have a lot of people that relocate here because they like the fact that we do have the four seasons. It's not always hot or always cold. You get to have the change of seasons. Have you been up to Shenandoah National Park at all to see how beautiful it is up there? No, I have not. And as uh, fall comes, my wife and I are going to get out and do a lot of trips in fall. Cause people have told me that fall is one of the best times around here with the changing of leaves and the trees and such. But no, when I even wrote in my letter for this job, I said one of the reasons I was leaving is true is because I wanted to come to a place with a change of seasons. And you've really settled in. You're living here now. Your wife is here. You were telling me your animal family has moved here with you. So you guys are pretty firmly planted now. Oh, yes. We're well settled in. I was very fortunate. I came up here and I was able to purchase a house and I closed on it the day I drove up here for my first day of work. So wow. Time wise. I had a whole day and a half to find a house, but I got lucky. <laughs> and your wife let you come and do that without her? She did. <laughs> wow, I'm going to have to meet her. That's pretty brave. She trusted me. And I, <laughs> I, knew, I, and I knew I better not mess it up. <laughs> That's true, because you'd have to live pressure. there. Right. <laughs> My husband jokes that he would live in a cardboard box. This is why he will never go without me to choose a house. Yes. <laughs> Well, Mike, thank you for taking some time to chat with me today. I appreciate getting an update on all the projects that are going on. I think you're doing a fantastic job. You're welcome. 